Good morning. So I'm going to run you through some notes on the equine respiratory tract in relation to nursing care of the equine athlete. Just bear in mind that the surgical procedures relevant to this body system are covered in your surgical nursing two lecture. So you may find yourself needing to flick back and forth between uh, these two modules as you read through my notes, just to clarify some points. So if we have a look at um, respiratory problems, we'll find that they are common and they are significant, particularly if we're talking about athletic animals. If the horse has a problem with its airway, either it can't get enough oxygen into its lungs, or once the oxygen gets there, it's finding it difficult to traverse the alveoli and get into the bloodstream rapidly enough, we're going to end up with an athlete that can perform optimally. So as well as being a, you know, a welfare issue for the animal, there's also a performance issue here for the owner or the person who's riding the horse. The other big issue with these, some of these conditions is that they can be hereditary. So we want our equine athletes to have healthy, fully functional airways. Um, we can manage the husbandry of the animals. For example, we can control dust and mold in the environment to try and maintain airway health. But if the animal has a hereditary condition, obviously that's more problematic. We can't manage that away. So there's a multifactorial aspect to the management of these animals. You've got to think about the cause of the condition and then figure out what can we do to try and manage it or um, get rid of it if possible. Just to remind you, we talked about this previously um, in relation to paces and equine athletes, that when the animal canters or gallops, uh, the horse's rate of breathing is linked to its stride. So if you think about it, their lungs are in their rib cage with this large muscle mass of the forelimb on each side of it. So to, to expand the airway and draw air into the lungs and expand the diameter of the thoracic cavity, that's easiest to achieve when the horse's legs are in the air during the swing phase of the stride. And then when their forelimbs hit the ground, those muscle masses compress the chest between them and they help to force air rapidly out of the airway and then allow the animal to take the next breath or the next inhalation when the limbs leave the ground again. So you can see in these two photographs, the horse on the top left um, is at the moment a gallop where all the limbs are in the air. And at that point, the nostrils are flared and air has been very rapidly drawn down the airway and into the lungs. And then a couple of um, milliseconds later, the forelimbs hit the ground as the animal exhales and that helps to push air rapidly back out of the lungs, ready for the next breath, which will take place in the next phase of the stride. So it's this very rapid um, breathing rate. There's, a, you know, the number of strides a horse takes per second at full gallop is somewhere between about 2.2 and 2.8 strides a second. So if you take say, an average of two and a half strides a second, that means they take two and a half breaths a second. So it's a very, very rapid respiratory rate when they're at full speed. So anything that in some way limits their ability to breathe is going to have a very large effect on their performance just because of the, the biomechanics of how they move. Um, so looking at a video here of a horse, I'm just trying to stand down a bit. This is a horse cantering. So it's inhaling as its legs are in the air and it's exhaling as the legs are in the ground. So it's basically inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So that, this is a slow canter. And even at that, you can see how rapid the respiratory rate has to be. If you imagine a horse at full gallop, they'll be moving an awful lot more quickly than this. So it's just a reminder of how closely linked stride pattern and respiratory pattern are in this species and the practical effects that has on our patients. Then how do we know if the animal has an inspiratory problem? Generally what the owner or the trainer or the jockey will report is that they'll hear the animal making what they'll call a noise, an abnormal um, breathing sound. In a normal horse with a fully functional airway, inhalation should be silent. So as the animal inhales, there shouldn't be any audible sound associated with that. Now we will often get sounds associated with exhalation. So as the air is pushed back out of the lungs through the nostrils, we'll often get fluttering of the nostrils and we'll make animal make this characteristic kind of snorting noise, but that's completely normal and doesn't have any detrimental effect on their athletic ability. If you watch horses cantering or galloping, you'll often hear them snort as their forelimbs hit the ground as they exhale, that's no problem. What we're concerned about is a noise while the animal is inhaling, while its forelimbs are in the air. So we'll go back to this video and play it again for you. It should be inhale, 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 inhale. And we don't want to hear any sound. Whereas if we look at exhale, 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 exhale. If we hear a sound as the forelimbs hit the ground, no problem with that. If we hear a sound as the animal inhales, we're concerned 
I'm going to turn the volume back up in this video now and you can hear some respiratory noises. There's also a bit of wind, but you'll hear some snorting noises. Snort. 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 Okay, so try and get the habit. If you watch horses canter or galloping, try and figure out their stride pattern and listen for any um, noises. Generally, most noise you hear will be associated with exhalation and it's completely normal. Particularly if the animal is excited or feeling well in themselves, they'll often snort or with, with effort. Whereas if they're making an abnormal inspiratory noise, we'll hear a sound while the forelimbs are in the air. And what's happening here is something is causing that airway to be narrowed or not able to obtain full abduction during inhalation. Normally, we want during inhalation, we want the airway to be as fully open as possible to allow air to flow into the lungs unimpeded. So the animal will extend its head, it'll flare its nostrils, it'll also fully abduct its larynx. If you remember back to your first year uh, module, the larynx has these two cartilages, the arytenoid cartilages at the cranial extent of it. And during inhalation, the muscles attached to those cartilages contract and pull the airway wide open to ensure as much air as possible can flow through the larynx. If there's something wrong with those muscles and the larynx is not able to fully open, we'll hear an abnormal sound during inhalation caused by respiratory tract tissue, usually the vocal cords, vibrating in the narrowed space. So we get what's called a whistle or a roar as the horse inhales. So here's a picture of the larynx. As we look at it, the left hand side of the horse is on the right hand side of the image and the right hand side of the horse is on the left hand side of the image. It's just something you have to get used to turning around in your head. In this animal, the right arytenoid is, is normal. Um, so we can see if we draw a line down through the larynx, dividing it into left and right halves, the right half appears on the left hand side of the image. The left half appears on the right hand side of the image. And you can see that the right arytenoid cartilage is tightly pulled back against the dorsal roof of the larynx. The right vocal cord is tight and has a clean, sharp edge on it. But if we look at the left hand side, we can see a little wider gap between the left arytenoid and the dorsal roof of the larynx and pharynx. And we can see there's a bit of um, laxity in the left vocal cord. Instead of a, a tight, sharp edge, it's a bit um, relaxed looking. So when the horse inhales, the left vocal cord is going to flutter or vibrate in that airway and give us this abnormal inspiratory noise. And that's what the owner or jockey will often report. The condition we're referring to here is called recurrent laryngeal neuropathy or RLN. Neuropathy tells you it's associated with nerve damage. Larynx, it's the nerves of the larynx we're talking about and recurrent means that once it develops, it's irreversible, it doesn't go away. So this is a hereditary condition often referred to as being whistling or roaring sound. It's usually the left-hand side that's paralyzed. Again, if we go back to our anatomy, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is one of the longest nerves in the body. It comes out of the brain through the ventral um, skull. It only has to travel a few inches to innervate the, the larynx, which is right underneath it. But because of a kind of a evolutionary quirk, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve heads down the neck, close to the vagus, into the thorax, around the base of the aorta, and back up the neck to, ir to innervate the larynx. So even though the distance between the brain and the structure the nerve is innervating is only a few inches in that old horse, the nerve itself is well over a meter long. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve runs from the brain directly to the right inside of the larynx, so it's much shorter. So the longer a nerve is, the more prone it is to nerve damage. So we see this abnormal innervation of the left side of the larynx. And over time, the left side of the larynx may become completely paralyzed. So when the horse tries to inhale, it can't abduct the left arytenoid at all, and its ability to inhale is greatly reduced. It just can't get enough oxygen in to meet its metabolic demands. So that gives us reduced exercise tolerance because the horse is literally running out of petrol. They can't get enough oxygen in there. There's a grading scale um, devised by Jeff Lane from Bristol University, which grades the larynxes from one to five, where one is normal and five is completely paralyzed. Actually, very few racehorses have completely normal larynxes. We normally find um, quite a lot of grade twos on the scale. And the way it works is that grade one is normal. Grade two is the horse can of can of achieve full abduction of both sides of the larynx, but there's a bit of asymmetry there. Um, grade three is 
the horse can achieve full abduction, but it can't maintain it. So the left side usually starts to drift back in before the right. Number four is no longer able to obtain full abduction and five is completely paralyzed. So that's just a quick overview of how the, the grading system works. The problem with it is, is it's irreversible. So once the animal develops it, um, it's, it's there for life and we can only manage it. It's hereditary, so we see it more so in some families or some breeds than others. Um, so there's a hereditary component to it. Um, it's also more common in large horses than small horses, presumably because the longer the nerve is, the more prone it is to, to this condition. And it's sometimes found to be more common in males than females. So there is a possible sexual component there as well, though whether that's related to body weight, we're not exactly sure. So if the animal has recurrent laryngeal neuropathy, it will make this abnormal inspiratory noise. It may well be exercise intolerant and we know that the condition will get worse over time and it won't go away. So that's, that's problematic, obviously. If you're buying a horse to be an athlete, you don't want to have recurrent laryngeal neuropathy. However, if we listen to horses exercising, we'll find lots of them will make abnormal inspiratory noises during exercise, particularly at fast paces. And the good news is that most often this condition is not irreversible, is not reversible, it's not RLN. A lot of these other things that can cause a similar type of noise are minor and self-limiting. So for example, if the horse is unfit, it may make an abnormal inspiratory noise as it gets tired. It may have an upper respiratory tract infection. So mild viral infections are very common in young horses, yearlings, two-year-olds, three-year-olds. They get herpes virus or other type of head cold conditions. They may cough a little bit. And while they have the condition, they may make an abnormal inspiratory noise. Rather than having, having tonsils, their lymphoid tissue is spread out across the roof of the pharynx and it may get inflamed and bumpy. And when you put an endoscope in there, you'll see these little bumps on the roof of their pharynx. They're completely normal. They'll resolve as the animal develops antibodies to the condition. But the problem with them is they may make some abnormal sound at the time. So the good news is if an owner reports a respiratory noise that we're worried about. In many cases, it's nothing to worry about long term. It'll get better, it'll resolve over time. But we must make sure that the horse doesn't have RLN because, as we know, that will be irreversible.